Hello, and welcome to Archbishop Williams High School's 68th Commencement Exercises. As president and a very proud alumnus of Archbishop Williams, it's my distinct privilege and pleasure to honor and recognize this outstanding group of young men and women, our seniors who have completed all of the appropriate courses, have earned all of the credits necessary, and have performed all of the community service required to graduate from Archbishop Williams High School. Back on March 16th, we embarked on what we thought was to be a two to three week hiatus, a journey into uncharted territory for the world of education. And now here we are four months later. Due to circumstances beyond our control, we are live streaming this virtual ceremony. This is not the way any of us would choose to observe this milestone in the lives of our students and their families. But it is the hand with which we've been dealt and rather than bemoan our fate, we will step up. We will give thanks for the chance to put a fitting, finishing touch on a truly remarkable year for our school. And we will celebrate the many impressive accomplishments of the Archbishop Williams class of 2020. Over the last three months, these students and faculty have dealt with the unique challenges posed by remote learning. There was no dress rehearsal. There was little or no warning. No other generation of teachers and students ever had to deal with that. There was no roadmap to follow, no game plan, and no footsteps in which to walk. And yet, they persevered. They pushed forward, never missing a day of learning. What they achieved together is nothing short of remarkable, and their combined resolve and work product has been inspiring. And so it is in that spirit and by the virtue of the authority granted by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the power vested in me by His Eminence Cardinal Sean O'Malley, Archbishop of Boston, Mr. Thomas Carroll, Superintendent of the Catholic Schools of the Archdiocese of Boston, and the Archbishop Williams Board of Trustees, that I hereby declare these commencement exercises open. Now this afternoon, in addition to awarding diplomas, we will be announcing certain awards and scholarships that would ordinarily be given at senior breakfast, as well as the top student athlete awards normally given out at our all sports program. Both events had to be canceled. I now invite our principal, Dr. Michael Volanino, to offer an invocation. Let us take a moment, wherever we are, to put ourselves in the presence of God. I pray in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of so many bountiful gifts, we thank you for the gift of these graduates, the class of 2020. We ask you on this day to send your spirit on them wherever they are gathering. Be with them, build them up, 
and make them be filled with joy and pride in their accomplishments. In a way, too, we remember all those suffering from the pandemic. Send your spirit upon them as well. Let us always remember that everything that we do, we are called upon to give glory to your name and your son, Jesus Christ, whose love always drives us on. In his name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Dr. Valentino. We will now honor our country with our national anthem. Please stand. Be seated. It is now my pleasure to invite Archbishop Williams Class of 2020 President Meg Marcel, who will bring re readings from the class. Good afternoon, family, friends, faculty, and fellow graduates. Well, we did it. We all accomplished one of the early milestones of our lives, high school graduation. Today is the day that the same path we have all been taking together splits into 122 unique roads. But graduation is not an end goal in itself. It is instead a part of the larger journey of life. The world we live in today is plagued with dangers such as COVID-19, racism, and global warming. But despite all the odds, we still managed to graduate. It was only four years ago that we came to Archie's as freshmen, where the upperclassmen told us that there was a fourth floor or that there was a pool on the roof. Soon later, we all became wise fools. And that was the year we all turned 16 and our only worry was, how are we getting to Spayhew's Sweet 16? <laughs> that was fun. As soon as junior year hit, for many of us, that became stage one of senioritis, where turning in work did not really happen. Then we became seniors, where being late happened all the time. But don't worry, the traffic was always bad. When senior year hit, none of us had any clue what 2020 had in store for us. Every day was the same. You would wake up and be running late for school, but still stop for your morning coffee. Then come strolling in to school at exactly 8.15, trying to avoid all faculty with the coffee you just bought. Then you get to first block and you try to convince the teacher you were right down the hallway during mor morning announcements, even though you were still in the APL. The day would continue and you forgot about all your homework, so you rushed to do it the block before probably fail a quiz or a test here and there, but before you knew it, it would be 2.20 and we would all sprint out to the APL. You get in your friend's cars or maybe rush to practice, go home and stay up way later than you should and do it all again the next day. Then all of a sudden it was March 13th and it was their last day of high school, the last time everything was normal. 
We left school that day saying, I'll see you guys in two weeks, don't worry. But the two weeks turned into the beginning of April, then the beginning of May, where May turned into, we are never going back to high school ever again. We didn't know that our last game, last class, our last day being in high school was how it was all going to end. Not knowing if we would have our last spring season, prom, graduation, or just our normal lives back took a toll on all of us. All the adversity we have had to face just shows everyone who we are as a class. We are strong, fearless, hopeful, and leaders, but most importantly, a family. It does not matter how our senior year should have ended. It is how we got there and what we had to go through. Because without the year 2020, we would not be who we are today as individuals and as a class. Now, I promised myself I would not say anything cliche, but here it is. I hope each one of you creates the life you have always wanted, to capture each moment, have no regrets, and live a lifetime of happiness. All of us are individually unique and have a variety of talents that can take us anywhere we want in life. Don't look back years from now and worry about the what ifs. Control the controllables and take advantage of every opportunity you have, because all, as all of us have learned, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Tom Brady once said, I think sometimes in life, the biggest challenges end up being the best things that happen in your life. I didn't come this far to only come this far, so we've still got further to go. When I was thinking of, say, when I was thinking of how to say goodbye to all of you, four days after my speech was due to Dr. V, it finally hit me. Why do we have to say goodbye? Today is the day we have all worked so hard for and the day we finally graduate. We were supposed to sit here together on our graduation day as a class of 122 kids that have come from all over the South Shore. But there is one thing we have in common. We all chose to come here. We have all been through so much together that it only makes us stronger as a class. We are the class that everyone will remember because of what we went through. On behalf of the class of 2020, we wanna say thank you. Thank you to the administration for being here for us during these difficult times. And thank you to our teachers for being lenient um, when we were in school. But most importantly, thank you to our parents. For all that you've been to us, for all that you are, and for all that you've done for us. We, without you, we would not be the individuals we are today without your help. Lastly, to the class of 2020, thank you. We made it, and it was difficult at times, but here we are. We came out stronger than we were before, and that is who the class of 2020 is. We are resilient, determined, and always down for a good time. So today, we take our diplomas and move on to the next chapter of our lives. It has been my privilege to be your classmate and friend the past four years. Thank you. Thank you, Meg, for your greetings and relevant comments. And thank you very much for being such a great representative and leader of the class of 2020. Now, Governor Baker and the MIAA accomplished something that no Catholic Central League teams or pitchers could have done. By canceling the spring sports season, they prevented Meg from breaking every Archbishop Williams hitting record. I was looking forward to seeing them, but I look forward to following your career at Bryant College. I now invite Amanda LaRusso, our class salutatorian, to deliver her address. I really wish you were all seated here in front of me, but nonetheless, welcome family, friends, faculty, and most importantly, the class of 2020. It has been a crazy ride, but we did it. No matter how unorthodox it may be, stay excited because we are graduating. Despite all of the uncertainty, we are finally able to applaud our accomplishments and celebrate graduation today. If someone had told me as a freshman that the last few months of my senior year 
were going to be spent rolling out of bed to Zoom with my teachers and classmates, I never would have believed them. But lo and behold, during these unprecedented times of quarantine, we've had to face adversity and learn to make things happen in ways we never could have imagined. Our world turned completely upside down. We quickly became bored of being at home and binge watching Netflix. Suddenly, face masks were the new fashion statement, and we were no longer begging Dr. V for dress down days because pajama day was every day. <laughs> Although quarantine is not how we envisioned spending the final months of our senior year, I hope you, as I have, found some joy and learned some one-of-a-kind lessons. We are living through a serious and defining moment in history that we will talk about for the rest of our lives. We may not have followed the same path or created the traditional memories of the classes before us, but hopefully we created and witnessed some we never expected. As children from the generation who came while the nation was healing from 9-11 to the high school seniors graduating in the midst of a global pandemic, we have quite possibly lived through the strangest and most turbulent of times. Because of these experiences, we have grown stronger than we ever believed we were, and even more capable of handling the challenges life will inevitably throw at us. When life throws you an inconvenient curveball, consider it a plot twist. These twists and turns in your book of life may move you out of your comfort zone, but into something better. Let them serve as reminders to appreciate what you have, who you are, and the character God has forged. Yes, these moments in history are huge for all of us, and they will always be permanently etched into our stories. But the future awaits, and it is up to us to write it. Think of all we have gained from our time at Archie's. Every person we met, every class we took, every club or sport we joined, and every memories we made has shaped us. We have let God make the lemonade from our lemons. There will always be challenges, but anything is possible when the love of Christ drives you on. So I'm asking each of us to face challenges head on with our souls wide open to all the possibilities. The past months of reflection has put us on a path toward dreams we never could have imagined before. There will undoubtedly be more curveballs in our future. We must always strive for excellence in everything we do because we can change the world. So, what else is there for us to say or do? Just embrace the most unconventional end to our high school experience as a reflection of unique opportunities. Take stock in our blessings, whether it's a morning coffee, a workout, fun moments with family, technology to stay connected with friends, or just a moment of peace sitting in the sun. We have finished our high school career, and the best is yet to come. The class of 2020 is going to go on to have many more achievements to celebrate. There is more for us to accomplish, more memories to make, and more people to connect with. The classes who have graduated before us all have stories. But for the class of 2020, well, we made history. Thank you all. Thank you, Amanda, very well said. Congratulations on all of your outstanding accomplishments here at Archbishop Williams. Amanda will be attending Emanuel College having received that school's highest merit scholarship. She intends to pursue a career in medicine. I would wish her luck, but I know she doesn't need any. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce our esteemed principal, Dr. Michael Volanino, to deliver our commencement address. It is more than fitting that Dr. V speak today. 
He arrived six years ago with our first seventh grade class. I recall his Skype interview vividly. He was teaching in Austin, Texas. His energy and enthusiasm were literally palpable. He was the clear choice to lead our school, my school, forward. If you've had the chance to read his bio in our program, you will see that his familial and academic pedigree are beyond dispute. He is the son of a career Catholic educator. He is a product of Regis Jesuit High School in New York, Harvard University, Rutgers, and the University of Texas. I've often thought that Harvard and Texas was a very interesting mix. It has been my distinct privilege to work with Dr. V side by side for these past six years. And when I was thinking about ways to describe our experience, these words came to mind. Intellect. His is rare, even in the field of education. Passion. He has great passion for his family and his profession. Love. Tremendous love for his students. A role model. The way he conducts his life is a, is a great role model for all. Leader. A product of the Jesuit tradition of Regis, he is a leader who serves. And most important, faith. He is a man of great faith. His faith shines through in everything he does, and all of us who deal with him daily are the beneficiaries. To our school and students, and to the class of 2020, Dr. V has been all of these things and much more. Dr. Michael Volanino. President Duggan, distinguished student speakers, and to everyone watching on YouTube Live, especially the class of 2020, at long last, we gather here or there to honor this remarkable group of young men and women. I'm the very proud principal of Archbishop Williams. And as President Duggan just described, I could not imagine a journey more fated to bring me here to this magnificent school. I'm so deeply proud to be here to offer a tribute to the class of 2020. And with or without a live audience, this is a graduation like no other because this is a class like no other a class in every sense of the word. But first, take a moment from wherever you are and offer a little gratitude to Meg and Amanda. These are role models for being leaders. And you're gonna meet more today in Caroline, Nick, and Sally Rose, our class valedictorian. We could not be more proud of them and second, as the students know, I've developed a little bit of a style when I get up to a podium. And virtual speeches have a tendency to drag on. We get a little too comfortable sitting at home. Perhaps we've got a, a, a glass of soda. We're with family. But for right now, I want to invite sort of everybody at home to stand up, wherever you are. And I want you just to scream. If you are proud of these students, I want you at your screens at home to try and break the internet right now and yell an amen. Are you with me? Amen. Put it in the chat box, too. All right, you can sit down now. But that's the spirit of Archbishop Williams. Whenever we gather, the Lord says where two or three are gathered in our name, there Jesus is in, the, in our midst. That's where two or three Archies are gathered, that spirit, that joy is there, and so it should be today. You know, Amanda, in her speech, talked about a plot twist. 
what this really is, is the last minute rewrite. And interestingly enough, as I reflected on this class, there was something eerie for me as I look out now at an empty lot and just a couple of seniors sitting before me. Because the image that came to my mind was being on senior lunch duty on Monday, March 9th. You've heard the 13th. I want to talk about the 9th. Because on that day, Coach K and I were on senior lunch duty, staring at just a couple of seniors in an empty cafeteria. Parents, if your seniors in the room are smiling right now, it's because Monday, March 9th, was senior skip day. Maybe you remember turning in the voucher to sign off on that day. To backtrack, the ninth should have been a victory lap in school for these seniors. Our girls basketball and boys hockey team had just wrapped up a deep run in the MIA tournament. We had concluded the finest spirit week our school has had in years. And with the seniors' enthusiasm, camaraderie, and maybe just a little skullduggery, these OG baby blues managed to just edge out the original, the current baby blues, and win our Spirit Cup. We were a week away from guys and dolls. And as it turns out, uh, that was the last thing we did as on campus. And if that was the way we had to go out for 2020, I can't think of a better way than that production. So sitting in that cafeteria, I could not understand why this group had chosen a cool day in March rather than the warmer climbs of May for a senior skip day. Well, little did we know. But even in real time, Coach K pointed something out to me in the cafeteria, that that day actually said everything about them, and maybe more than this class realized. See, the moment this group entered Archbishop Williams as seventh graders, they bonded. And as the years went by, that class cohesion, that school spirit, grew greater. I hope you could have heard it in Megan Amanda's speech. And that enthusiasm, that connection, stood out even in, among classes in a school that's known for it. This is a class unlike any other, a class in every sense of the word. And so when we thought about taking the day on the ninth, it made sense. We were between sports seasons. The pressures of the end of year academics and AP wasn't there yet. We were between that period of college applications and college decisions. And the Guys and Dolls crew would still be able to pull things together for the weekend. What could happen here was that the seniors found a day that they could skip as a class. there would be no fear of missing out. They, they could do something, even in their skip day, that nobody else had done, and take the day off in March. Now, as principal, I can't and still don't condone it, but I can respect it. Amen? So in that spirit, that camaraderie, this class had earned all of the rites of passage of senior spring. But we know that was not to be the case. The year stopped. And doubly, perhaps, doubly cruelly, just as things were to get a little bit of normalcy this week, we had to press pause again and gather in an emptier space, reminded of the terrible power of the virus. Through it all, 
we felt the pain of your grief. And as faculty, administrators, we know at times you were grieving. Yet we were proud of the work you continue to do. You might have skipped the day. You could have skipped the entire rest of the year. You could have logged out, but you stayed together as a class through Zoom and you finished strong. You finished as that class like no other. But I'm gonna think just for a minute on that grief because in contemplating how to provide a way to contextualize this experience for all of you in principal's remarks and keynote remarks. I was thinking, I've been thinking about that in light of the work of a Jesuit theologian, and yes, I am a proud Regis grad, Father Brian Massengale, whose specialty is actually racial justice. Now, I'm not gonna stand here and compare the evils of systemic racism to the lack of an opportunity not to be able to dunk Miss Mariana or myself in the dunk tank on senior field day. That is an experience you won't get. But instead, Father Massengale offers us a way to think through when something is profoundly wrong, when it feels wrong with every sense of our being, and what could feel more wrong than what happened in this senior spring. He finds a way to go from injustice to justice. And that's what I want to talk about here. Massengale starts by acknowledging the heart, the mourning, the lamentation. I imagine there are days when we truly lamented what was going on to all of you or to your families. And lamentation is more than just private hurt. It's collective. It's a collective acknowledgement that something, something is amiss, and you search for blame. And in even that Judeo-Christian tradition, that blame can turn to God. And yet, when we collectively lament, if we truly acknowledge it, as we all did, there's a funny thing that happens. Lamentation can give way to hope. You heard a little of it, again, in these speeches. The hope was exemplified when the seniors came to us and said, we want to have a July spirit, senior week. And I submit to you that even if we didn't get this final day, that hope was not misplaced. Because the hope born of lamentation creates space for compassion. When you truly feel the wrong, when you can deeply sympathize with one another, you get a visceral feeling that I have to do something. We have to do something to make it better. And in that spirit, you get creative. And if you need an evidence of the creativity, I'm gonna ask one of our camera operators if they could just quickly pan the setup that we had in place for today. And we have this video wall, we have space for chairs. We have this podium, we have this sound system, we have this live stream. How many times over the course of the last six years and administrators before me, when a class came up and said, can we graduate outside? We said, we are never ever going to do it. We can't do it. Can't be done. As it turns out, just looking around, the missing element was compassion. When we needed to find a way to put a ceremony on for these seniors this weekend, we found a way. Even if it's through this live stream, that's compassion. And you all exhibited it. How many times over the course of these past few months have you had to support a friend in need to honor a life event? And the social distancing guidelines prevented anything normal. So you got creative. Maybe you had to teach a family member how to Zoom. Maybe you scheduled a drive-by. 
Maybe you, found out, maybe you found a way to hang out in the APL and have one last moment there. Compassion, when you truly empathize with one another, breaks through the I can't do this. And it makes the impossible possible. It opens the door up for new solutions. And this is very Christian. In fact, throughout the Gospels, when Jesus acts, the gospel is clear that he's moved with compassion. If you go to Mass this Sunday, Matthew's gospel is going to talk about Jesus weeping for the death of John the Baptist and yet being moved by compassion by the crowd that gathers around him. If compassion moves our Savior, when we as a community say the love of Christ drives us on, compassion has to move all of us. And lamentation can give rise to compassion. But Father Massingale goes one step further than compassion. Because true compassion gives rise to solidarity. A solidarity is this radical notion that we truly are in each other's care. All our communities, local and global, are connected. And we must stand with one another. The moments, however fleeting they may be, when things felt right during the pandemic was when we stood in solidarity. And perhaps the moments when things went awry, we may have forgotten that. Never forget, as bishops, we come from Boston and Beijing from Weymouth and Wuhan, from Braintree and Brazil. These are your classmates. Your classmates are the world. They're sitting here before you at home from wherever you are. And today, we as a family stand with all of you. Tomorrow, you will be called on to stand up for each other and for the world and continue to show yourself an historic class, a class like any other. For you leave this world, you leave this place, facing a world in desperate need for honest lamentation, genuine compassion, and strong solidarity. Father Massengill's formula in his writings is being put to address the evils of systemic racism. And he reminds us that oftentimes Catholic institutions, institutions like Archbishop Williams, have fallen short on those three key elements that produce justice. And we acknowledge that. And there's so much more to that than just racial injustice. You are going off in a world filled with economic inequality, environmental degradation, and the need for civil rights on so many different levels. And if you think that I just kind of went back to lamentation, you'd be right. But you see, I already have hope. And my hope is in the experiences of the class of 2020, this historic class unlike any other. After all, look what you did with a skip day. Amen? amen? That's an amen that knocked off my hat. My favorite poem is Ulysses by Alfred Lloyd Tennyson. It's a comfort to me in times of crisis. In fact, the moment we were going, we found out that we were going to have to shut down, I put the final stanza on the whiteboard in my office. It's still there. And I'd like to conclude today with the words from Tennyson from the 19th century, and I think it resonates for this moment. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that which strength in old days moved earth in heaven, 
that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Class of 2020, much has been taken from you, but oh, look at what abides. Look at the bonds that you have forged here, the obstacles overcome. Look at this historic class of heroic hearts and stronger in will than perhaps you could ever imagine. That can never be taken away from you. Continue to have compassion. Stand in solidarity with each other and the world. Strive, seek, find, never yield. And may the love of Christ always, always, always drive you on. Amen. We are so proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. V, for your insightful, thought-provoking, and inspiring remarks. Your dedication to and leadership of Archbishop Williams has brought our school to new heights, and the future has never been more promising. At this point in the proceeding, I want to stop to honor our first class of seventh graders. In 2013, Archbishop Williams made the momentous decision to fundamentally change its academic structure by establishing a seventh and eighth grade program. This was true uncharted territory for our school and as such required a significant leap of faith by all involved, including most importantly, our prospective students and their parents. In September 2014, after working on this for a year, we welcomed our inaugural class of seventh graders to the school. These pioneers, and that's what they were, believed in our vision and promises of what unique benefits Archbishop Williams had to offer, and thankfully agreed to sign on for the journey. While our seventh and eighth grade program under the able leadership first of Ms. Lisa Fasano and for the last five years, Mrs. Katie Folan, has proven to be a success beyond our wildest dreams and plays a critical role in our plans for the future. We owe a debt of gratitude to these first students for accepting our invitation and challenge to be all they could be. Their success established a well-respected brand and spurred significant growth to our program. In fact, that group of 39 initial students in seventh and eighth grade, 20 of them in seventh grade, is now over 130 students. And we have established for the first time a waiting list for our seventh and eighth grade program. So this year, 15 of those initial seventh grade students are graduating, and I want to recognize them today. Jack Klefstad, John Christiani, Jr., Emily Harris, Madison Kelly, Jennifer King, Caroline Marcotte, Nicholas Mariani, May McDermott, Caitlin O'Keefe, Lucien Polizio, Caden Rakes, Edward Rossini, Sally Rose Savage, Alexa Tibbetts, and Broderick Tewitt. Thank you all for taking a chance on Archbishop Williams. It has truly been a wonderful and memorable journey together, and even though it's been six years, it seems like yesterday when you became a part of our family. A special thanks to Mrs. Fallen for her outstanding leadership in teaching and to the parents 
Thank you all for believing in Archbishop Williams and entrusting your children to us. We hope you are as pleased with the product as we are. And by the way, at Senior Breakfast Wednesday, when we recognized students who had perfect attendance, we recognized first those who had perfect attendance for this their senior year. Very impressive. We followed that with people who had perfect attendance for four years. Quite an accomplishment. And finally, finally, we recognize Jack Clefstad and Sally Rose Savage from this group for their perfect attendance for six years. Incredible. And like some of Mr. Larkin's track records, they can never be broken. I now invite three members, three original members from that inaugural seventh grade class, Caroline Marcotte, Sally Rose Savage, and Nick Mariani to the podium for a special presentation. The class of 2020 will go down in the record books for sure. However, 15 members of the AWHS class of 2020 will forever be an important part of the storied success of Archbishop Williams High School's 70 plus year history. We are the first ever groundbreaking students who completed six years at Archbishop Williams. We are valedictorian. We are student athletes. We are campus ministers. We are actors and actresses. We are friends. We are National Honor Society members. We are blessed. We are bishops of the month. We are homecoming court members. We are faith filled. We are super fans. We are grateful. We are team captains. We are campus leaders. We are the original baby blues. We are the finished product. We are grateful to have had the experience of the last six years together. We are indebted to all those who worked tirelessly to bring the middle school program to fruition and to those who mentored, encouraged, and cheered us on for the last six years. We would like to offer a very special thank you to President Duggan, Dr. Volanino, Mrs. Folan, who we knew as Ms. Fersard, Mr. Curley, Ms. Mariano, Coach K, and Coach McClay. Thank you for all of your hard work to make today a special day for us, our families, and the entire Archbishop Williams School family. Thank you, Caroline, Nick, and Sally Rose. Dare I ask whether you'd consider signing up for a postgrad year? Why end a good thing? What's, just, what's another year? I now invite Dr. Volanino to present our candidate for graduation. Dr. Volanino. President Duggan, members of the Board of Trustees, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to confirm that the following students have completed all of the courses, earned all of the credits, and performed all of the service necessary to receive a diploma from Archbishop Williams High School. The members of the class of 2020 are John P. Allen, Claire Mildred Ahrens, Lauren Marie Beardsley, Nolan Bosset, Andrew Wayne Bradley, Ava James Brady, Leo 
Tan, Boy, Nolan, M, Carragher, Catherine, T, Cleary, Jack, Thomas, Clefstad, Angelica, Rose, Clifford, Victoria, Coakley, Matthew, Keneally, Megan, E. Cormican, Joseph, John, Costello II, John, Christiani, Jr., Grace, Marie, Cuddy, Jesse, E. DeAngelis, Mariana Raposo de Souza, Connor Stephen Dolan, Catherine Grace Donellan, Brendan Thomas Donovan, Amutian Elizabeth Oika, Bruce Fong. Andrew Raymond Fedorowski, Braden Macy Ford, Caitlin Patricia Fox, Lucas Francoeur, Abigail Rose Frazier Tully, Sarah Elizabeth Gabriel, Lauren Marie, George, Liam, P, George, Jana, Maria, Jandrea, Colleen, Ashley, Goulart, William, Green, Erin, Margaret, Gustafson, Rebecca, Rosine, Gustafson, Jacob, Cody Hammond, Ashley Rose Hamparian, Emily Rose Harris, Brandon William Hayes, Taryn Elizabeth Healy, Rose Nora Hadeen, Christian A. Hendricks, Matthew Paul. Herrick, Will, Patrick, Hingston, Oliver, Joseph, Hobson, Kyle, John, Hurley, Sophie, Anna, Jerkowitz, Julia, F. Keldzen, Madison, Louise, Kelly, Grace, Elizabeth Kennedy, Jennifer Ann King, Jessica Ann Knight, Joseph Krochko Jr., Eleni Yana Krompusus, Audrey E. Labadini. Jackson D. Latchney, Catherine Renee Laurie, Kyle Lavalley, Alexandria D. Learink, Tom Liu, Amanda Marie LaRusso, Brittany C. McDonald, Paisley Blue McNeil. Megan Catherine Marcel, Caroline Emily Marcotte, Nicholas Robert Mariani, Olivia Rose Marini, Daniel McAnulty, May Sullivan McDermott, Miles Thomas McDermott. Jack McPartland, 
Megan, Christine, Miller, Caroline, Greta, Morris, Benjamin, Nadell, Caitlin, E. O'Keefe, Olivia, Judy, Pacheco, Thomas, Robert, Page, Louis, Rachel, Louise, Palmiel, Palmorel, Palmorelio, Alexander, Palagio, Crystal, Crystal, Plung, Jake, Russell, Penny, Marcus, Pierre, Landon, J. Piron, Lucian, B. Polizzo, Anna, Elizabeth, Humphrey, Tara, Patricia, Quill, Caden, M. Rakes, Olivia, Katerina, Ranieri, Edward, L. Rossini, David, Ryan, Neil, J. Sanders, Keith, Michael Thomas, Savage, Sally Rose, Elise, Savage, Julia, Marie, Sheehan, Martin, Cleary, Simmons, Sarah, Spayhew, Puyeni, K. Sumani, Justin, Toludo, Nicholas, Vincent, Tardinico, Emma, Therese, Thomas, Alexa, Tibbets, Broderick, Michael, Tuit, Vin, Vu, Amanda, Elizabeth, Wall, Eve, Wong, Renee, Kim, Worrell, Wayne, Wei, Angel, Wu. Congratulations to the class of 2020 for your achievements and excellence. It's my privilege now to announce the winners of our academic medals. Many members of this historic class have excelled spiritually, intellectually, ethically, and physically over the years. By virtue of the following medals, we recognize and celebrate their excellence in specific academic disciplines. The students we are about to honor have excelled academically, demonstrated a keen interest an intellectual curiosity that's the mark of a scholar, and developed a love of learning in the noted content area. These are silver and gold medals. The recipients of one silver academic medal are Nicholas Robert Marini for social studies, Mariana Raposa de Sousa, foreign language Spanish, Angel Wu, foreign language, French. Congratulations. The recipients of one gold academic medal are Ashley Rose Hamparian for performing arts, Megan Christine Miller for theology, and Abigail Rose Frazier Tully, fine arts. Congratulations. And the recipients of multiple academic medals are Emutian Elizabeth Oweka, two gold medals, social studies and foreign language for French. Amanda Marie LaRusso, two gold medals, English and science, and one silver medal for mathematics.
and, and Sally Rose Elise Savage, one gold medal for mathematics and three silver medals for theology, English, and science. On behalf of your teachers and administrators, we couldn't be prouder of your academic accomplishments. Thank you, Dr. V, and congratulations to the class of 2020 and all of our academic award winners. It is both appropriate and fitting that your outstanding accomplishments should be recognized publicly. We're very proud of you all. Now, in addition to the subject matter academic medals, we announced a number of additional awards recognizing superior performance at Senior Breakfast Wednesday. These awards are listed in your program. Congratulations again to all of our students who were recognized at Senior Breakfast. Your efforts and accomplishments were most impressive. At this time, I invite Sally Rose Savage to deliver the class valedictorian address. Sally Rose. President Duggan, members of the Board of Trustees, Principal Volanino, faculty, staff, family, friends, honored guests, and most importantly, the class of 2020. I'm going to start this speech today by asking you a favor. I think we can all agree that the idea that this day would never come was not so far-fetched. But something even more important to acknowledge is why we are here today at all. We graduated high school, and that is what I want to talk about today. Because a global pandemic isn't what made this day possible, we did. So I ask that for the following two hours until my speech is over, that you allow yourself to enjoy the everyday cliches that a graduation speech is bound to bring. Because after all this craziness, we deserve at least that. When trying to figure out what to say in this speech, I found myself at a loss. I stand here today in the same exact position as everyone else, with just as little outlook on what the future holds. So, in true procrastinator fashion, I decided to look to the movie trilogy that has given kids extremely high expectations of high school since 2006, High School Musical. For those who aren't familiar, or as a reminder for those who may be overly familiar, Sorry, Mom. These iconic movies have defined our generation through their depiction of high school, combined with songs that are far too easy to get stuck in your head. And while I personally never witnessed a spontaneous dance number break out in the cafeteria, or a ballad in the middle of a basketball game, much to Miss DC's dismay, I'm sure, I would be lying if I said I didn't see any correlation to our real lives especially through some extremely relevant song titles. The series begins with the perfectly named song, The Start of Something New, something we've all experienced in some form or another during our time here at Archie's. First, when we walked into the front doors, ushered into an auditorium with a group of kids who had become our classmates, and more importantly, our friends, unaware of the countless memories we would make. In between, we found new beginnings all the time, whether it be attempting to sneak yet another coffee in the building, welcoming in new classmates, singing another chorus of our God is an awesome God, or even just starting a new day. Archie's has brought us so many new beginnings, all of which have led us here. But with beginnings usually comes an implied ending, and that is where we find ourselves today. Given the gift of the start of something new while simultaneously saying goodbye to this chapter of our lives. But just as the movie shows how exciting new beginnings are, it also represents how endings don't always have to be sad. We leave this chapter of our lives full of love, memories, and friends that we will always carry with us. Which leads us to our next song, Breaking Free. 
Of course, I could make the obvious reference here because we've all wanted to be free of high school at some point or another. Whether it be after a long day full of tests, the cafeteria being out of your favorite fries, or really just wanting to go home. But there's also the small moments of freedom we often forget. Getting dismissed early to go to TD Garden and cheer on our girls' basketball team, having study long block and buying that muffin while you laugh with your friends, having a whole spirit week dedicated to having fun together as a class, and so much more. But no matter which way you look at it, we did it. We're breaking free. Four years later, we are ready to soar and fly, as the song says. So let me take this moment to not only say congratulations to all of you for that accomplishment, but also to everyone who helped us get to this point. Without our support systems, the class of 2020 would not be where we are today. And for that reason, I think I speak on behalf of all of us when I say thank you to everyone for your unwavering support. And finally, that brings us to the most famous and relevant song of them all. We're all in this together. I guess that beneath all the song references I've thrown at you, this is the point that I'm trying to make. Because like I said, I don't know any more than you, but these past six years at Archie's have certainly taught me that. As a class, we have been through all of our highs and lows together. From freshman year orientation, to teachers dancing on desks, all the way to our senior year Spirit Week victory, to today, our graduation day. Yes, we all celebrated our individual successes, but not without lifting each other up along the way and sticking together as a class when it counted. And it wasn't just us. It was our parents, teachers, family, friends, classmates, strangers, and the whole Archie's community with us along the way. If there's one thing this time has taught us, it really is that we all are in this together. Just like the end of our senior year to this very moment, we may be physically separated in the future, but it won't stop us from coming together when it matters most, just like we managed to do today. All right, this is it. Give a sigh of relief because we finally reached the end. Yes, of this speech, but also almost of this graduation. In just a few short minutes, this ceremony will end, and we will all go on with our days. But on a more dramatic note, to the rest of our lives. But as Troy Bolton pronounced in his graduation speech, once a wildcat, always a wildcat. But I think once a bishop, always a bishop has a nice ring to it. So. Remember how I mentioned cliches earlier in this speech? Well, I'm going to cash in that favor that you embrace it one last time by ending this speech with me, saying that very phrase. Because this graduation speech is not about me. It's about all of us, together, despite the physical distance, one last time. And that is how I want to end this. In true Archie's fashion, with a typical Dr. V ending to this momentous event, with us all joining together to say this. So here we go. Clearly, I have no way of knowing whether or not you are all are joining me, but I'm choosing to believe that you are. I'm going to ask that you all put aside any grudge you may have towards the clicheness of the matter and join me. President Duggan, members of the Board of Trustees, Principal Volanino, faculty, staff, family, friends, honored guests, and most importantly, the class of 2020. One last time, on the count of three, after three, all together we say, once a bishop, always a bishop. One, two, three. Once a bishop, always a bishop. Thank you. Great job, Sally Rose, thank you. Well said, 
and congratulations on your extraordinary accomplishments in this very competitive environment. Sally Rose will be attending the University of Central Florida and will major in en environmental engineering and legal studies. You can never have too many lawyers. Best of luck. I met Sally Rose at an admissions event six years ago. She probably doesn't remember it, I do. That night I told my wife and Archbishop Williams classmate, Mary, how impressed I was with the poise, pep, and personality of one of our prospective seventh graders. I remember saying I hoped she would come to AWHS as she had the potential to be a superstar. The proof, as they say, is in the pudding. I only wish I could choose stocks as well. We're now going to announce some special awards, which would normally be presented at senior breakfast. The full award descriptions are in your programs. Our first award is the Thomas Bolton Unsung Hero Award. This is presented to a student who has a notably enthusiastic attitude, has actively participated in academic as well as non-academic activities, and has positively impacted his or her class in a number of ways. This year's Bolton Award is presented to Madison Kelly. Congratulations, Madison. Our second award is the Mother Catherine Spaulding SCN Award. Mother Catherine Spaulding founded the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth. This award is presented to a student whom the administration judges has exhibited the most progress as a student and a socially aware, morally responsible citizen during his or her four years at our school. This year's Mother Catherine Spaulding Award is presented to Megan Miller. Congratulations, Meg. Our next award is the Mary Lou Sadowski Loyalty and Service Award. This award in its inaugural year is presented in honor of Mary Lou Sadowski, who has served, taught, led, and mentored Archbishop William students, faculty, staff, and administrators for more than 35 years, including as a teacher, a club moderator, a department chair, an academic dean, an assistant principal, and for 10 years, principal of Archbishop Williams. It is presented to a student who has exhibited the tireless work ethic, loyalty, zeal, generosity, and commitment to their classmates in school that marked Mrs. Sadowski's tenure at Archbishop Williams. The recipients of the inaugural Mary Lou Sadowski Award are Meg Marcel and Connor Dolan. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next award, also in its first year, is the Perry Larkin Transfer Student Award. This new award is presented in honor of Mr. Perry Larkin, who excelled at Archbishop Williams as a record-setting student athlete, a loyal alumnus, and for the last 35 years as a gifted coach and sage guidance counselor, including many years as director of our school's guidance department. During his stellar career, Mr. Larkin always made a concerted effort to ease the transition of those students who started high school elsewhere. This award is presented to a student who has made outstanding contributions to his or her classmates and school community in less than four years at Archbishop Williams. The inaugural recipients of the Larkin Award are Ava Bradley and Oliver Hobson. Congratulations, Ava and Oliver. Our next award is a recognition, the Campus Ministry Awards, named after Brother William Drynan, who did such a great job with our campus ministry and as our principal for five years. Now, for those of you who don't know, in order to graduate from Archbishop Williams, a student must perform a minimum of 70 hours of community service. And that community service is defined. The following students completed 140 to 199 hours of community service while at, while at Archbishop Williams. John Allen, Lauren Beardsley, Nolan Carragher, Matthew Connolly, Megan Cormican, Joseph Costello, Connor Dolan, Emitian Iwika, Jennifer King, Aleni Krampuzos, Audrey Labadini, Nicholas Mariani, Caitlin O'Keefe, Thomas Page, Olivia Ranieri, Julia Sheehan, Abigail Fraser Tully, Emily Harris, Kyle Hurley, and Renee Rowell. Congratulations, all. 
The following students completed between 200 and 299 hours of service. Catherine Laurie, May McDermott, and Martin Simmons, congratulations. The following students completed between three and 400 hours of community service. Now keep in mind they were only required to do 70 hours. Will Higston at 352 hours, Sally Rose Savage at 370 hours, Jonna John Andrea at 375 hours. Congratulations all. And in this category is also Braden Ford, who through his service to the Nash School in Weymouth and his scout troop will advance to the rank of Eagle Scout, a truly extraordinary example of a leader who serves. And Braden also achieved one of the highest combined SAT scores in his class. Well done, Braden. And finally, yes, there is somebody who's worked even harder for their community. I want to highlight and salute Megan Miller's extraordinary school record 894 hours of community service. Thank you, Meg. What an example you set for all of us. And thank you all for your exemplary service to Archbishop Williams and to those in need in your community. Next, we have our special scholarships. These are only possible because of the generosity of our founders and donors. We thank these and all of our donors for their support for our school's mission and these deserving students. The first scholarship is the Stephen P. Hassel 67 Scholarship. Mr. Hassel, a former member of our Board of Trustees, continues to serve on our board committee that oversees our facilities improvements. He established this scholarship in 1990 for students intending to pursue an engineering degree. The 2020 Stephen B. Hassel Scholarship is awarded to Sally Rose Savage, congratulations. Our next award is the Suzanne Sheehy Scholarship. A member of the class of 1986, Suzanne Sheehy lost her life to cancer at the age of 18. She had planned to pursue a degree in engineering at Merrimack College. This award is granted to a student who has achieved one of the highest mathematic averages at the highest math level we offer. The night this award, the Susan she Suzanne Sheehy 86 Memorial Scholarship, is awarded to Amanda LaRusso. Congratulations, Amanda. <laughs> Next, we have the Emma Ryan Memorial Scholarship. The Emma, Emma Ryan Memorial Fund honors the memory of Emma Ryan, a beautiful, smart, and kind-hearted 15-year-old Hull High School sophomore who died unexpectedly on October 29, 2016. A true student athlete, Emma was an honor roll student, participated in student government, and played soccer, basketball, and softball. A friend to all with an infectious smile, she will always be remembered. This award is given to a student who, like Emma, is caring, kind, empathetic, and always thinking of others. The Emma Ryan Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Emma Thomas. Congratulations, Emma. Our next award is the Charles Benedict Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is given in honor of Mr. Charles Benedict of the class of 1968, a classmate and friend of Mr. Perry Larkin. Charlie was a Plymouth District Court probation officer for over 30 years. He was significantly disabled twice in his life by two different medical problems, either one of which would have stopped most people. But he continued to work throughout his disabilities. By helping others, he helped himself. This scholarship is given to a student who exhibits a positive attitude, is giving of themselves, has overcome obstacles, and is grateful for and maximize his or her abilities. The Charles Benedict Memorial Scholarship is awarded this year to Nick Tardinico. Congratulations, Nick. Our next scholarship is the William and Betty Sullivan Memorial Scholarship. Bill and Betty Sullivan's five children all graduated from Archbishop Williams. Three of their grandchildren are also AWHS alums. It was of the utmost importance to Bill and Betty that all of their children attend a Catholic high school where they could grow in knowledge of their religion while receiving a top-notch college preparatory education. In 2001, the couple's family and friends established this scholarship in their memory, in memory of their son Tim of the class of 1966 and daughter Martha of the class of 1969. This award is given to a senior who has made the most of his or her opportunity to attend Archbishop Williams and whose siblings or parents are also alumni. The William and Betty Sullivan Memorial Award goes to May McDermott. Congratulations, May. 
The next award is the Janine Sullivan Follow Your Dreams Memorial Scholarship. Janine Sullivan of the class of 73 was the fourth of Bill and Betty Sullivan's five children to attend Archie's. Her classmates established this scholarship after her untimely death in 2001. She is remembered for her spirit, energy, and her determination to achieve her goals. She turned her love for animals, especially horses, into a talent and passion for equestrian sports. Her dream was to complete at the high level in the intricate form of riding known as dressage and to ride the world-famous Lipizzan Italian stallions of Vienna, Austria. Through a single-minded dedication, she fulfilled both dreams. This scholarship is awarded to a young woman who embodies Janine's zest for life and her spirit and determination to achieve a goal, her loyalty to her family and friends, and whose presence has been an integral part of the identity of her graduating class. The recipient of the Janine M. Sullivan Follow Your Dreams Memorial Scholarship is Caroline Marcotte. Congratulations, Caroline. Our next award is the Sister Mary Blunt Scholarship. This scholarship is presented in tribute to the honored memory of Sister Mary Blunt, who began teaching at Archbishop Williams in 1949 as one of our school's first faculty. She became our school's second principal in 1955, serving until 1961. She then returned in 1969 and worked here until her sudden death in February 1976. This scholarship is given to a student athlete who has shown academic ability and commitment to, to athletic excellence, excellence, loyalty to his or her team, and a strong performance in proportion to ability. The Sister Mary Blunt Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Jana John Andrea. Congratulations, Jana. Our next award is the Reuben A. and Lizzie Grossman Award. This scholarship, awarded and continuously given since 1956, is given in recognition of outstanding service and leadership to the Archbishop Williams community. The Reuben and Lizzie Grossman Scholarship is awarded to Amanda LaRusso and Sally Rose Savage. Congratulations, Amanda and Sally Rose. Our next scholarship is the Paul Sullivan and Richard Russell Memorial Scholarship. This award has been given annually for 55 years in memory of Paul Sullivan and Richard Russell, two outstanding young student athletes who were tragically killed in an automobile accident on the way to Archbishop Williams after an early morning hockey practice. The award recognizes contributions to and leadership in the sport of ice hockey, as well as the recipient's community-oriented altruism. The Paul Sullivan and Richard Russell Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Ava Brady. Congratulations, Ava. Our last category in this, our last scholarship in this category is the Kate Phelan McCarthy Memorial Scholarship. Kate Phelan McCarthy touched her classmates with her quick wit, her bright personality, her kindness, and welcoming smile. She impressed her teammates with her skill, determination, and competitive drive. And she inspired us all with her love of life. Indeed, her philosophy of making our days count rather than counting our days still resonates throughout our school community. Each scholarship recipient must participate in multiple sports and or our theater ensemble, excel in the classroom, and have the respect and admiration of his or her classmates. The recipients of the 2020 Kate Phelan McCarthy Memorial Scholarships are Claire Ahrens, Nolan Bosset, Catherine Cleary, Megan Cormican, Connor Dolan, Taryn Healy, Nicholas Mariani, May McDermott, Miles McDermott, Caitlin O'Keefe, Thomas Page, Tara Quill, Neil Sanders, Nick Tardinico, and Emma Thomas. Congratulations, all. Our final two academic awards, our top two academic awards, go to the graduates whose grade point averages over the last four years have been the highest in their class. These awards are named in memory of Mrs. Beecher's Priest, a local philanthropist who for years provided scholarships to students from many schools, including ours. It is a tradition of Archbishop Williams to present these scholarships to our valedictorian and salutatorian, both of whom you've heard from earlier in this program. The 2020 Beatrice Priest Awards are presented to 
our salutatorian, Amanda LaRusso, and our valedictorian, Sally Rose Savage. Congratulations. <laughs> our next awards are normally the highlight of our annual all sports celebration event. They go to six student athletes who have made very special contributions to our athletic program and deserve special mention. Our first two awards celebrate sportsmanship. Sportsmanship has been defined in many ways and as we all know has been the subject of much debate lately, sometimes too close to home. Wikipedia defines sportsmanship as sports enjoyed for its own sake with proper consideration for fairness, ethics, respect, and a sense of fellowship with one's competitors. It, value, it, value, it refers to values such as fairness, self-control, courage, and perseverance with respect to and respect for others and authority. Sadly, too many in sports today put too much emphasis on winning and not enough on sportsmanship. At Archbishop Williams, we value sportsmanship greatly. We strive to be among those schools singled out by the MIAA for sportsmanship awards, and we are virtually every year. We have been successful in large part because of the leadership and example of our AD, Mr. McClay, our assistant AD, Mr. McDonough, our dedicated coaches, and because of the example set by student athletes like our two winners this year. The 2020 Archbishop Williams Sportsmanship Awards go to David Ryan and Jess Knight. <laughs> David will be attending High Point University and major in finance. Jess will attend Southern New Hampshire University and major in forensic psychology and of course lead their basketball team. Our next two awards go to our unsung heroes. As with sportsmanship, unsung heroes are the subject of many different interpretations and definitions. The term is in the, in the category of I know it when I see it. At Archbishop Williams, an unsung hero is a student athlete who has made consistent substantial contributions to his or her teams without significant fanfare. This athlete is both a coach's dream and a successful team's necessity. Both of our recipients tonight personify that term. The 2020 Archbishop Williams Unsung Hero Awards go to Teddy Rossini and Maisie McDermott. <laughs> Teddy will attend Bridgewater State University and major in aviation science. Maisie will be attending Florida Atlantic and will, and will study commercial music business. Congratulations, Teddy and Maisie. Our final two athletic awards of the year are presented to the two best student athletes for the 2019-20 school year. As with any awards such as these, we've had much discussion about definition and criteria, and there were several shining candidates. After consultations with our coaches, we arrived at two outstanding recipients for this prestigious award. Our Male Athlete of the Year recipient is Connor Dolan. <laughs> Connor will join his brother James, also a winner of this award, at the College of St. Rose. He will major in management and play baseball. Our final athletic award goes to our Female Athlete of the Year. And we are blessed that she's here with us today, Meg Marcel. Congratulations, Mel. Thank you. Congratulations to all of our student athlete award winners. Your individual effort and excellence and your invaluable contributions to your teams are a shining example to all. I hope you remain involved in sports in college and beyond. And now comes the most prestigious award that Archbishop Williams gives to a graduating senior. It's called the Williams Award. It's determined by a vote of the faculty, staff, and administration. It exemplifies what we would like to think is the final product of an Archbishop Williams education. This award is meant to recognize a student who realizes their strengths and weaknesses, capitalizing on the former while attempting to minimize the latter, who strives to reach their potential and is desirous of learning all they can about themselves and the world of others, who has defined their values spiritually, intellectually, ethically, and physically, and is true to themselves and loyal to everything they hold dear. All of these personal traits are well manifested in this year's recipient. The recipient of the 2020 
Williams Award is Caroline Marcotte. Congratulations, Caroline. You joined the short list of highly accomplished and well-respected young men and women, Archbishop Williams graduates, who have been so honored. You've proven yourself more than deserving to be in their company. We know you'll do great things next year at the University of Central Florida. She will be study, you'll be studying hospitality management, and best of luck. And congratulations to all of our award winners. So, members of the class of 2020, while this commencement comes to an end at the conclusion of your high school careers, it really signals the beginning. So it is my sincere hope that this important achievement will mark not an end, but the start of a long and positive relationship as participating alumni of Archbishop Williams. You are now official members of our esteemed alumni group of some 11,000 strong people who are leaders in every walk of life, every profession, and every service. And you have proven more than worthy to join our ranks. I ask that you keep in mind how much our school, our faculty, and our staff have meant to you, and that you resolve when and as you can to give back of your time, talents, and treasure so future generations of students can have the same opportunities to grow and succeed during those most important years of their lives as well. Your individual participation and support of Archbishop Williams really matters, and I guarantee you that your ties as a class and community and as alumni of our great school will matter more and more as the years go by. I can assure you that your understanding of the sacrifices, I can also assure you that your understanding of the sacrifices your parents have made and your appreciation for the love and support they have so selflessly provided will also become more apparent as you continue to grow and experience life. Please take the time right now and every day to thank them. Class of 2020, you have overcome unforeseen and unprecedented obstacles to get to this day. You made history with your show of resiliency and resourcefulness. You are well prepared for what lies ahead, and we are all looking forward to bearing witness to your future endeavors and successes. Good luck, Godspeed, and always allow the love of Christ to drive you on. Congratulations. We'll now proceed with our recessional. <laughs>